All right, this is a strategy guide for newer Agricola players. I have been around the block a lot with playing Agricola. One of the most commonly requested things is what are tips you'd give to newer players? Um, there's not a lot of like pure Agricola strategy content that's out there. And I have a pretty good record at Agricola. I finished fourth in the original arena season. We're not going to talk about last season, but last season I was top 10 for a majority of it. Um, and so, like, I, I've had a good run with Agricola stuff, um, but I'm a person that, like, I play Agricola to have fun mainly, but I play at a relatively high level. So I just want to out i just want to put my strategic thoughts out there of like if you're a newer agricola player this is the way that i think about things this is how things roll these are tips that i see newer players uh could use these are pitfalls that i think uh newer players can fall into and so like i just want to put all this out there if you're watching this on youtube uh chat say hi youtube i'm live now on twitch.tv slash econ sean where i uh am streaming board games i've been streaming this kaizo ironmon challenge which has been really fun so i've been doing a little bit pokemon but i'll stream board games here so uh subscribe to the youtube channel comment literally i make these videos for zero dollars zero dollars so uh all of those types of things help a lot um and let me know if there's any tips that i've missed or if you're a newer player and you're curious about anything please do let me know and i'm happy to answer and same goes for you twitch chat if you have questions um then let me know uh, and i will drink some water while you uh subscribe all right um with that out of the way uh let us go ahead and get into it. So for newer Agricola players, I think that um, as a preface, this guide is meant for four-player Agricola with drafting, but everything extends to other Agricola styles as well. I'm going to talk more generally about things, but when I, when I say tips, I have in mind four-player Agricola. Um, all right, so first tip, the first, the absolute first thing that I recommend is that for newer players, right, I'm assuming that, okay, you've played some Agricola, you know the basics of the rules, but you're unsure about sort of where to go from there in terms of, like, how to think about Agricola, what you're doing wrong, what you should be doing right. To, to get yourself in the right mindset, what I want to say about it is that the end goal of Agricola, so everything that you do in Agricola, should be to maximize your score. That's the first thing that, and like, it seems obvious that like, okay, well, you know, typically when you're doing things in Agricola, you know, it should be to maximize your score. Like that, that's obviously the case, but I, I want to really contextualize that of like, what does it mean to maximize your score? Well, that means a couple things. It means that generally you want some of everything, right? You get two points for the first cow that you get. You get two. You get one point for the second cow that you get, right? You generally want some of everything. Getting a little bit of everything is a, generally a good way to maximize your score. But you also want to do things efficiently. So you also generally want to do things efficient, efficiently. So efficiency, efficiency, if I can spell, is king slash queen. <laughs> efficiency is king slash queen right doing things efficiently is the main way that you're going to end up scoring lots of points in agricola and that could mean a lot of things right it could mean like getting lots of family members efficiently and that you can use those family members to do things it could mean taking actions that are efficient in terms of the amount of points in terms of the feeding that they get you so when thinking about actions Think about what is the opportunity cost of taking this, i.e. what could I have been doing instead of taking this action? And is this action efficient, right? Is it efficient to plow fields? Is that good for my game plan? Am I planning on sowing later on? Is it efficient to do that? Versus like, is it better to just like focus on growing, right? Thinking about how you can do things efficiently is really, really important in Agricola. Um, and in addition to that, getting points is you can do that in many ways, right? There's many ways to get points. You get points by taking a field, by plowing a field. That's worth essentially two points by itself. You get points by taking a huge fence action. That could be worth a lot of points. You get points by buying a fireplace. A fireplace is not worth very many points, but it helps with feeding, right? So to contextualize, feeding is important, but just in terms of the points, let's just focus on how do you get to the end of the game and get a high score in Agricola? 
I just want to talk about okay, what are the big the big big points things that you you could have, right? So what are, what are the big points things that you could have at the end of the game? So in terms of like big efficient points, you have the following: you have breeding animals is the huge one. Get fencing in order to take breeding animals is insane because like if you take two sheep in stage two. Well, then there's the stage two harvest in which those sheep will breed. Stage three, four, five, and six harvest in which those sheep will breed. So basically by taking two sheep in stage two, you're turning that two sheep grab into many, many, many more sheep, six or seven sheep. And that is either a raw like four point move because you're going from negative one to three points which is a four point move or you can use that for food plus points breeding animals is both efficient in both points and in um, terms of feeding and that's something that i'm going to continue as a point but breeding animals is a huge way to get points um and that's one of the huge engines of the game and that's something you should always be thinking about is like can i get these animals breeding can i utilize that either for points or that it's huge thing it's a huge hole in newer players games that like they don't breed animals as quickly or they're too slow to or they don't realize the efficiency of it um so breeding animals is really important family growing i'm putting as the next thing because the act of family growing is a huge efficient point action because you're getting yourself three points for the extra family member you get a minor improvement when you family grow likely and you additionally are creating more actions for yourself in the future to take and so so that single family growth action that you take is is very very efficient points wise I'm going to talk about some of the background stuff of how you get family growth. It not is, is not necessarily efficient to get to the family growth, but family growing is a huge way that you get points, and, and I'm going to talk about family growth later on. But generally, family growing is a great way to get lots of points because you can use those extra actions to do things like get extra fences, breed extra animals, you know, plow fields, sow, things like that. Um, speaking of those things, sowing crops is also can also be really big uh, efficient points. I'm going to put like a little asterisk on it because the actions to take a bunch of fields and then take crops individually and then sow them, not efficient by themselves, but with cards to help you out, either help you get crops, help you plow fields, or cards that allow you to bake more efficiently or help you get a bunch of grain or things like that. So the act of sowing is really, really insane because sowing crops, right, you're turning one grain into three grain, which, you know, if you sow two grain, that's turning two grain to six, which is a lot of points. Turning one veggie to two veggies is a lot of points. So if you sow on like three fields, it's really insane. And additionally, that action allows you to bake bread. So like setting up that action, not very efficient sometimes, but like the act of taking that action, really, really efficient, really big points. So I'm putting an asterisk on that. I'm also including the well in this as well. The well is typically two actions for four points. Typically you take a three stone grab and take the well, but I'm including it up here because the well is so, getting five food in addition to your four points is so stupidly efficient. Like even though it's basically two actions for two points, which everything in the next section of like medium efficient points is gonna be, like it's so stupidly efficient. Getting food and points at the same time is something absolutely huge, right? So when you're thinking about your, your farmyard and agricola, you're thinking about a plant throughout the game you have to balance efficiency of feeding and efficiency of points and so for that reason all of these things that are in this big efficient point category are ways of doing both of those at once um another thing so in terms of medium efficient points i put the following things i put plowing plowing by itself is worth two points fencing Fencing by itself is not worth that many points when you collect the wooden fence, but fencing's insane because fencing allows you to hold breeding animals, right? The whole point of fencing, it being points, is that it allows you to have um, breeding animals, which are huge, efficient points. The whole point of plowing, which on itself is an okay action in terms of efficiency of points is so that you can eventually sow crops right and you're not going to set up all these engines in a game sometimes you're going to get to the end of the game and at the end of the game you're going to be doing fencing or sometimes you get to the end of the game and at the end of the game you're going to be doing plowing right or sometimes your family grow a little bit late um but the goal is to set up something incredibly efficient early on so that way you can get a lot of 
uh, like feeding and points to stack up for later on in the game, right? You want to build up these engines in some way. And sometimes this this happens through the cards. I'm not going to talk as much about the cards, but the, the whole point of this is that you're, you're trying to create these through mediumly efficient actions. You're trying to create these super duper efficient point actions for yourself. And when you get more advanced, that can happen through cards. But this is the very basic way to do that without thinking about cards at all. Um, so we have plowing, we have fencing, um, we have, I put um, renovating, renovating is also a medium um, efficient, mid efficient point action, by itself renovating is not that efficient, but w with a fence action it's incredibly efficient if you can line that up, with a major minor improvement that could be really efficient, but typically renovating is like, ta I'm not a big fan of renovating in general, like of course it comes up as a way to give yourself more points, but like the act of renovating, you have to take so many actions to renovate, right? You need to read, you need a resource for each room, and then you have to take the renovation action, so you're taking like maybe three actions. Maybe it's like two points in action, right? Everything in here is like roughly two points in action. Um, taking a veggie, I, I put in here sort of near the bottom of like, this is like an okay way to get points if you need it. It's like okay in terms of efficiency. Every veggie is worth a point. The first one's worth two points. Um, and you can use those for sowing later pretty easily. It's a pretty nice way to get points. Single animal is about the same thing. Worth noting, taking a single cow twice, right? You can then breed those cows and breeding cows is very good, right? Taking single animals, single sheep, single boar, not quite as good, but worth knowing that like taking a single animal by itself is worth two points and then if you can take another animal later on to breed them it's like not the end of the world but it's not great to do this um and then I also put majors. All the other majors are mid-efficient points. They vary in mileage depending on how efficiently you can get the resources for, like, if you build a pottery. If you have tons of clay floating around, that's going to be really efficient. If you have to manually take a, a small amount of clay off the board when you're building a pottery to, to feed yourself, that's not going to be very good. Um, so th your mileage varies depending on that. But it could be sort of mid-efficiency in terms of points. Finally, the terribly inefficient points... Um, the things that like are really not efficient in points, I'm leading off with something that you might not be expecting. Building rooms. Building rooms by itself in terms of points is awful. It is terrible to build a room because firstly, think about opportunity costs, right? Think about what you could have been doing with those resources instead. Five wood is four fences, which is three points of fences. The room that you're building is only worth a point by itself. So, and you need to read in addition to this, and you've taken action. So, building a room in and of itself is not worth points. The only reason building rooms is good for points is because it enables you to take an efficient action, which is family grow. But if you can't take family grows very efficiently, so like, for example, at the end of the game, on the very last turn of the game, should you be building rooms to family grow? Probably not, because it's not very efficient to do so at the end of the game. Um, so, like, but, like, in, in situations, it can sort of unlock more points for you, because family growing is good. But, like, you should be thinking about, okay, is building rooms going to get me a family grow? If I build a room, do I have to take start player a bunch of times in order to do that? Am I taking four actions to build a room just so I can family grow? In that case, it's not worth it. The act of building rooms is really inefficient by itself. The only reason to do that is family growing, which family growing is very important. I'm, I will get to that later. Um, manually taking grain by itself is a super inefficient action because sowing one grain doesn't actually net you extra points and it's not very food efficient to do that. Um, you to take grain and do baking strategies, you really want a lot of extra support to help you with that, but it can be, um, efficient to have baking strategies and sowing strategies, but you don't want to take grain manually to do that or unless you're taking like two, three grain at a time, then it can be efficient or taking other resources as well. Um, and that's what I what I have in this. I guess I should put stables in here too, but stables sort of goes along the same line. So, so it's worth keeping in mind, right, that your goal in Agricola is to set up really nice, efficient point actions through whatever you're doing, and that is the main goal. And, and breeding animals is definitely the big one. Family growing is the one that a lot of players, when you first pick up the game, it's very easy to see that, okay, when I family grow, I get more actions, more action equals more points, and, and that's very obvious. But these other things can definitely create those types of... Um, um, point efficiencies as well. So that's the first thing is that everything you should be doing is to maximize your score at the end of the day. But what we have to balance here is that the second point is that efficient actions are worth points indirectly. Efficient actions are worth points indirectly. And so what I mean by that is that if you have an extra family member, so like say that you have an extra family member, 
Well, if it's just taking food actions, and that's all it's doing is taking food actions to feed itself, because, you know, it takes two food for a family member to feed itself. So if you're starving and you generate an extra family member, well, an extra family member then is only worth three points if it only takes actions to feed itself. Right? That's not very efficient. If a family member is only there to take actions and you're having it feed itself, well, then all you've done is generate three points with that action. It's not very efficient. On the other hand, if you are taking a pair of animals, even if you don't have an extra family member, at every single harvest, those animals are giving you extra food, right? They're giving you free point or free points and or, and or free food that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get with your family members actions right so, so like there are a lot of ways in agricola without extra family members to create efficiency but the easiest way to do this is with extra family members right so so like i think that like at very very low elo people don't value family growth a lot at a little bit higher VLO, people value family growth too much. But there's some sort of balance between those two things that's very healthy, and it's worth thinking about, okay, how efficient is this, right? How, how efficient are my actions being? How, how many actions does it take me to family growth? How often do I have to start player? Start player, not a very efficient actions because minor improvements are not super efficient in general. Um, so, yeah. Um, as a aside for this part, a hearth is incredibly food efficient. Right? Efficiency is both in terms of feeding and in terms of getting points, right? You need efficient, you can have efficient feeding and that's gonna allow you to turn your actions into points. You can have efficient points and that allows you to turn your actions into feeding. You can have efficient of both and then your actions, you can do whatever you want, right? So efficiency is really king in Agricola. If you're lacking food efficiency, Grab a hearth. Hearth is always going to help you, right? Because it turns like two boar grabs into six food. Six food, pretty efficient action, typically is going to feed you for a harvest, right? Two cows into eight food, which is like a crazy action. Those cows can start breeding. It makes breeding animals really good. It makes sowing like veggies really good. Hearth is like the, the pinnacle of food efficiency. If you're not sure how to navigate your food through a game um, and, and like you're sort of not very good at it, just grab a hearth if you're scared about your food. Hearth is very good. Fireplace to a little bit of a lesser extent but fireplace having a bad conversion on the boards is a little bit scary but hearth is incredibly food efficient um it, it, it fixes a lot of food problems that you can have and of course along this line breeding animals um is incredibly food efficient is food efficient right if you're breeding animals that's like that is the pinnacle of food efficiency because you're generating food recursively every harvest for free you don't have to do anything you just have to have generated the capacity for those animals which is like really insane um so there's many different ways to get food efficiency right you could be passively generating extra food in the harvest in other ways but breeding animals the most easy example the easiest thing to point to and say to, to newer players like hey this generates food every harvest. That's saving you actions. You can do other things with those actions. You free yourself up. Um, sewing can be food efficient. Sewing slash majors can be food efficient. Right? They can be. It, it just depends on your cards. It depends on your setup. It depends on how easy you have access to different resources, how easy you can bake. But they can be food efficient, but it takes a little bit more, more setup and thinking about. Breeding animals by itself is a lot easier to think about. Sewing in majors is like, it, it's more of an it depends case. It's not like um, amazing. But one example that's worth thinking about. So sometimes the cards that you have can make up for efficiency that you might miss from family growing. So there is a card, Plow Driver, for example. Um, so like, let's think about a card. Let's think about plow driver. And what plow driver says that plow driver says that if you are, if you live in a stone house, renovating to stone, not super efficient action, but renovating to stone is, it gives you points. Plow driver says that if you're in a stone house, you can pay a food at the start of every round to plow a field. So essentially this card by renovating to stone is giving you an extra action every turn, right? It's allowing you to plow one extra field every single turn of the game. So you can generate efficiency through your cards in clever ways, right? You you having three family members and playing a plow driver, it's like having a fourth family member where one of them is taking a plow field all the time, right? So efficiency is not generated just through family members. It's generated through creating food engines, creating feeding engines, creating engines where you're generating points and food at the same time, creating engines where your cards are, are helping you passively generate something that leads to you having more actions freed up right these are all the things that are um important so plow driver is like an extra family member 
And the combination of all of those things is important when thinking about formulating a plan. And as you play more and more, you'll get more and more good at recognizing like, okay, well, this wasn't efficient. I took like five actions and accomplished two things. That's probably not very good. Or you could say, oh, this was incredibly efficient. I took like three actions and I'm fed for the rest of the game, right? So you'll, you'll slowly start to recognize this um, as you play more and more. So... The third thing that I have here, the third tip that I have is that, um, so, so I've talked about the overall sort of approach to Agricola, but now I want to go through the phases of the game. So now I want to start with the early game, and I just want to start off by saying is that you need a really good reason, I'm going to put really in caps because it's that important, a really good reason to not build a room and grow early with high priority you need a really good reason to do that um the it, like typically like the way to be good at agricola at first is to just get the first family growth if you're the first person to get a family growth in the game and other people are sort of like futzing around doing whatever you're you're very likely to win that game at low elo tables because you can take that family member and create efficiency with it that that otherwise wouldn't be there um so so if you're starting off your first like four or five turns in general should either be trying to get the resources to build a room and, and almost all of all of your games even if you're not directly trying to build a room immediately you should be taking the actions to like slowly try and build a room right like you should be grabbing three wood that's a really good action if you see two read you should probably be taking that unless you have a good reason not to you should have you should you should need a really good reason to not try and have building and growing in your plans in the stage two right after the first four or five rounds you should definitely have a very good reason to uh like to not do this um i i good reasons are exceptions they they are not the norm at all you should always be trying to get resources to build and why is that let's talk about why that is really quick is because um going from two family members to three family members is like it's so so um it's such an increase in efficiency and there's enough good actions on the board always that your third family member is always going to be good so so you really should be always trying to build a third room you should be trying to do that with pretty high priority right take the two read actions take read stone food take three woods take two woods and try and get the resource to build a room and your cards can help facilitate that you can also set up your feeding engine initially as well right you can start to like maybe play a card that gives you animal space so you can hold breeding pairs you can maybe take a fireplace right as because not everyone can build a room immediately you might have to like take feeding actions or, or like worry about setting up a food engine but you should still be trying to collect the resources to build a room eventually even if you're sort of sidestepping a bit to, to do a food engine you should always be you know focused on building that first room is really really important that first room is super duper important um along with that uh, the, uh, th so talking about building a fourth room, so building a third room, very important. We're going to talk about the growth queue in stage two in a second. Building a fourth room is good sometimes. Sometimes good to build a fourth room. Um, not always should you, sometimes it's going to be right to like build two rooms at once, but you shouldn't feel inclined to do that, um, at first. Um, building a fourth room is good sometimes. Your fourth action can be really good. But if everybody around you is building like five rooms, then your fourth room is going to be not very good because A, getting that family growth action is going to be very inefficient when you could be dedicating that time to building up farming instead and building up a good farm, which other people are not going to be able to do as much. They're going to be able to take advantage of the actions on the board. Um, and also, uh, like, like, but like if, if people are not building very many rooms and you could just build a room and grow without having to start player, then it's going to be really efficient for you to do that because you don't have to waste too many actions getting into the growth queue, right? So it's going to be good sometimes. It's going to not be good other times, but you shouldn't be tied to building a fourth room. I think that a lot of people, when they're starting off, think that growth is the only way to generate points. And so you just j get into this habit of like trying to build rooms and grow as fast as possible at the detriment to your ability to build fences and take breeding animals, at the at the detriment of your ability to plow fields and then sow crops, right? So these things are, are really important. Um, building a fifth room uh, is almost never good without support. It's almost never good without support. There's always exceptions to any of these rules, but it's 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 
almost never good to build a fifth room. If everybody is like clowning around and nobody's building rooms, then then building a fifth room can be okay. Um, but like typically that fifth family member is not doing much anyways because it's going after everybody else. So there's not going to be that many good actions on the board. Um, and so like it, it's it's not likely to be good. And you sacrifice so much wood. At the end of the game, the wood gets really tight, right? Wood is always good. That's worth mentioning, right? I've talked a little bit about the basic things, but like wood is always good. By far the most flexible resource, right? Reed's good for building. Stone's good for building improvements, maybe getting your feeding up a little bit. Same with clay. Clay is really good for, for that, right? But wood is always good. It's flexible for building rooms. It's good for building fences, right? These are things that are good. Um, and like, you know, so, like sometimes in the early game, you get like six wood, which is insane. Like six wood's a crazy action. Four wood's a really good action. Later on, it sort of dries up a little bit. Those good wood actions dry up because people say, hey, I need wood for fences because I want to hold these animals because they're worth a lot of points. And so that wood dries up. And so being proactive on using your wood for those fences can be really good. So a fifth room is almost never good because it takes too many actions. The family member is not very good. Only the early family members are good and so uh yeah so so the fifth the fifth room is almost never good um and yeah like i said new players almost never build and grow or do so very inefficiently right like a bad way to build and grow is like taking start player a lot to build and grow that's pretty bad or building and then not defending your growth with start player um is also really bad because you let a bunch of people jump in front of you instead of you getting a family member because maybe you get sidetracked by ooh the six wood is so shiny you should almost always just grow i'll get to that later on um but and then players at a little bit higher of level focus on growing too much where they're just building rooms all the time and growing because they've seen that okay this crushes the lower elo players but by doing that you just neglect your food efficiency and everything else on your farm so there's some balance of of being in the middle of that um early moves so so along this line right so along this line right early moves should uh, moves plural should um progress building or set up an efficient food engine to compensate Right? So if you're not building a room, then maybe you're grabbing a fireplace early on so that way you can cook sheep. Maybe you are setting up a like a big sow with field block. And sowing early on, I will say, is not great. But like fencing for breeding animals can be really good. Maybe you're trying to hold breeding animals early on so that way you get a little bit of food engine going. Um, but whatever you do, though, you should still be trying to build a room in stage two and get your third family member at some point. It, it, there are exceptions to this, but that's what you should be trying to do in general. And if you're new, I think that just like having that in mind is, is a good approach. So now that we're sort of out of the beginning of the game, um, one main thing is that you should respect and understand the growth queue. And you need an insanely good reason to pass on growing. So, like, it might happen that family growth doesn't flip immediately when you start playering for it. A lot of times you're going to have to just suck it up and, and start player again just so that you can guarantee your growth. If you're passing up on that, you need a really good reason because a lot of times what will happen is that if you don't grow when you're given an opportunity to jump into the queue, you're going to be pushed to the back of the queue because the person next to you is going to just start player and then they're going to get the first growth and then the next person after them is going to start player later on and then they're going to get the growth. So, like, it, you should be trying to defend start player to defend growth um, whenever you get a – you know, if you get a chance to, and, and sometimes it sucks to do that, but like you can more proactively make it easier to do by trying to save a lot of your miners for that start player battle. So like if you're taking start player like really, really frequently early on, um, then like that's going to hurt your opportunity, your, your opportunities to start player later on for growth. So you should be trying to plan around like, okay, well, when I start player, I get this minor improvement at least. What minor improvements can I play to sort of like play around family growth, right? You should be thinking about that. Um, one other thing that you should learn is that you should learn um, how to read when you should grow without start player. So how to read um, when to grow without start player. So like that's an important thing to read, right? So so one thing that as you get higher higher up you can sort of do is that if you're the only person that can build a room you can just delay your building of a room until someone else pressures you on it and then if you build if you're like the only person with a room in stage five or in, in round five sorry and the build a room is blocked then you don't have to take starting player to growth so you're effectively saving an action because you're saving a start player so like if, you, if there's only one room when growth flips then grow is free 
right? So if there's if you look around, there's only one rib built, growth flips, then you don't have to take growth until your second action. You can take another action instead. This is the sort of mistake I see people make is that they, they grow at their first action. You can just delay that until your second action because um, there, there are kind of annoying cards that let you jump in on things, but uh, it's very rare that that's the case. And most of those cards are banned anyways on BGA. So, um, so if there's one room, if there are two rooms um, when growth flips... Then the first person grows, and if the if nobody else can build, then growth is free for the second person. Right, because if there's two rooms built, growth flips, or, or say that like there's there's one person with a room built, there's another person that can't build a room. Well, if I grow. And then the other person builds a room. Well, now nobody can build a room. So then next turn, growth is going to be free for me. So I don't need to start player for it, right? So, so like, there's rare exceptions to this, right? There's cards that break this rule, of course. But, like, it's worth thinking about, like, okay, do I have to start player for this? If you're ever in doubt, by the way, just start player for growth. If you're ever in doubt, just start player for growth. Because missing out on growth is really tragic. It's really bad. So just start player for growth if you are if you uh, are concerned about it. Um, so if, if, if there's three rooms or more, then you probably have to start player. Right, you probably have to start player if there's three rooms or more and, and you're fine for family growth. But if you're ever unsure, just start player for family growth. Just do it. It's it's not worth um the you know, it's not worth it. Um all right, so that covers family growth queue stuff. Uh my fifth thing this is my fifth thing now, right? I'm on point five. My fifth thing is remember to farm. When you get into this mid-game, there's gonna be lots and lots of fighting over family growth. And you have to remember to do your farming yourself, right? You got to remember to take your family growths and pivot into, like, once you're, you're done with the queue, you got to remember to farm. You got to remember to get your plows in, right? Because those are worth a lot of points. You got to remember to, to fence, get wood for fences. You got to remember to take some animals. You got to remember to do all that thing. Farming is really efficient ways to get points. It's the crux of how you get points. You got to remember to get in your farming. You got to be careful that, like, you're not getting, because if you wait too long, you, eventually everybody's going to want, you know, those pigs those cows or whatever and then you're going to get blocked on farming being proactive on farming is really important and while you can really squeeze out a lot if other people are trying to family growth by just farming ahead of time um alternatively if literally everyone else is trying to farm then sometimes you can get a family growth in right so you're trying to sort of read what people are doing but always remember at the end of the day the way that you get points is with farming right so so turn your like family growths into farming because eventually you have to do that right maybe you're growing to three people maybe you're growing to four people maybe in a, a game you're growing to five people you always want to turn that into farming later on doing majors for points is like pretty bad most of the time um there's very few ways to efficiently turn majors into points uh, it's it's really hard to do it's pretty bad even with cards to do that um at the end of the day farming is the main way you get points in agricola you have turned your family growth into farming um, one topic that I didn't talk about with this, by the way, that I really want to go back and touch on is that when you're new to the game, uh, speaking about farming, you should like taking into account other people's plans is really important. It's an important part of Agricola because you want to know, okay, are people going to block me on this thing, right? If I'm going to try and fence now, am I going to get this animal pair that's on the board or should I be not relying on that instead? And if so, then maybe I can delay my fences, right? These are the types of decisions you'd be thinking about. At the beginning of learning Agricola, don't focus on blocking other people. Focus on furthering your own plans and getting as high of a score as you can possibly get, right? Because the likelihood is, at the beginning of learning Agricola, you're probably not maximizing your score, right? I have an average score of like 50, Pro play like people at the highest level, they have average scores somewhere between like 47 and like 52, somewhere in that point. So my average is like 50, 51. And I think average is like a good indicator of how good you are. It's not perfect, but it's a good indicator of how good you are. If you are getting, if I get a score below 40, it's a complete disaster of a game, right? And, and this isn't to make you feel bad about yourself if you're getting those scores. That It's just to say that if you're getting those scores, there's something that you can improve about how you're farming, and your focus should be on increasing your efficiency, increasing your ability to farm, rather than trying to harm other people at the table. Because if you're not doing things efficiently anyways, by harming other people at the table, all you're doing is, is making them angry and making them have a less experience, less good experience, and you are hurting one specific player at the table when you're not farming efficiently yourself. So I, I think that at the end of the day, I, I really have this principle that until you are 
sure about how you're turning things into efficient farming, then you're blocking on other people. You should not be focusing on that as much. At the top level, the blocks that people do are blocks that are things that are proactive in terms of farming, right? Taking a, a for food action off the board when someone else really needs food, well, food is efficiency, right? Food turns into actions later on if I have food. Um, if I take sheep from someone else, but I can hold the sheep, well, maybe I can't breed them now, but maybe I can hold two sheep and I can breed them later, right? That turns into points later on. So like the blocks that people do at very high levels are blocks that further their own game. It's not things to just block one other person's plan. It's things to further your own plan. I find that in Agricola, oftentimes the person with the best overall plan and the best pivoting and maneuvering around at the same time, trying to maybe limit what other people are doing, limit other people's plans, that's what gets them there. But in order to understand that, you have to first understand what your own plan is and understand how to make that as efficient as possible. The more efficient you can make it, the better it is. So you have to remember to turn all of your actions at the end of the day into farming. So you go through the family growth phase and then you go into farming. And at the same time, right, you want to be worrying about your feeding as well. So getting a hearth, right? Farming typically will turn to feeding as well, right? You can plow fields, you can sow, you can bake bread, you can play cards that help you feed, right? All these things are very important at the end of the day. Finally, my last tip for um, people who are new to Agricola and um, who are looking to like up their game. This is the most important tip of all. Uh, so if you made it this far, then this is the absolute most important tip that uh, you can take away from this video. Just have fun. Have fun, have fun with Agricola. Have, have a lot of fun. The, the main reason that I fell in love with Agricola and why I enjoy it so much is because... Um, for me, the the way you even though scoring points is the same way every game, there's so many freedoms in the way that you navigate a game, right? The cards that you have, the minor improvements, the occupations, they give you so much freedom in what you're able to do, right? Um, you know, I, I can I can play a game where I have two rooms the entirety of the game and I build three stone rooms because I just accumulate resources from that. I can play a game where I play a card that, that makes me take a beggar, but then I get a bunch of resources at the beginning of the game and I can utilize that to my advantage. I can play a game where I just play a standard game, but then I'm sort of like weaving through the family growth queue and just like taking efficient actions on the board, right? There's so many different ways to play Agricola. And the thing that I love about it is that like, even though all these things I've talked about have been like about like good ways to maneuver your farm, there's always ways of, of accomplishing things efficiently. That's always surprising. And a lot of the fun in Agricola is the creativity that can stem from it and just experimenting and trying things, you know, go for that crazy strategy that you see with these cards. Try it. If it doesn't work out, if it's not efficient, then like go back to the drawing board on it, but try those things, have fun, experiment with those things and, and just enjoy the ride because um it, it's such a fun game uh so with that that is my uh tips and tricks for new players i hope that you learned something if there's something else you want me to talk about let me know too i'm more than happy to talk about um other things but with that um yeah once again uh i stream at twitch.tv slash econ sean uh so say say goodbye youtube chat uh <laughs> so subscribe to the youtube channel uh thanks a lot everyone and have a, a good day so hopefully you learned something bye